we came looking for birds at Maja and Dege, the water place of water birds, but the wind's picked up a bit, so the, the birds are not really here. But we have a lovely little group of buffalo, and uh, I'm just going to move a little bit because there's a buffalo calf. I think some for some reason, since we've been here in Kenya uh, on the last two drives, we have seen the cutest buffalo calves ever. We had the one with the milk moustache last night. Now we have one that is sleeping so soundly. Look at that. How's that, eggs? That buffalo calf is fat, happy, content, and fast asleep. Uh, Mom's ruminating away and sticking close to Mom for protection, but absolutely passed out. Now, when we look at buffalo bulls here, you might notice a little bit of a difference uh, between the ones that you see commonly in the, in the Sabi Sands and the Greater Kruger. I'm just going to move forward. So, actually, we've got a perfect example here. Let me go like this. So, if we look at that furthest buffalo there, Zander, now you can see short horns but with quite a deep curve. And that is probably most of the buffalo bulls we get down in, in South Africa uh, are like that, but not quite. Oh no, now you're being rude, you're moving away. But there's a very distinct sort of horn type that is, is far more common in East Africa than it is in Southern Africa. But of course he has moved away now. Let me just reposition again. And it's, it's a very shallow curl, but with a very wide horn. Oh, the bull just woke Bubby up. He just, just stopped, stepped on the bubba. Oh, sweetness. Look at that face. I'm like, oh, why did I have to get up? I was so comfy. Oh, goodness. Look at the flies. Now, he's not looking at us. And there we go. He's turning his head a little bit. So when that bull turns his head, so it's a very shallow, a shallow curl with a very wide set horn on the bulls. And that, that's far more common in East Africa. We don't see it often in Southern Africa. Now, let me just see if there's another bull that we can, it's being a little bit more, there was another bull, there we go, there he is, that's showing that very distinct sort of horn pattern. Um, okay, where's he gone? There he is. Oh, look at that face. Well, Kirk's wondering where the ox peckers are. Well, Kirk, if, can you get the bull? Uh, one with the ox pecker on his nose, and Kirk was wondering, Oh, he's behind. He's gone behind a, a little one. Let's just go forward a bit more. Yep. So there's that very distinct sort of East African bull uh, horn structure that, that, that is very, very common in East Africa, but very uncommon in Southern Africa. Now, where'd that ox picker go? Have you got him? And so there's both. Is it a red bull or yellow bull? You don't have the ox picker. Yeah. We get both, the, both species here with yellow bulls being more common. Yellow. yellow. Yeah, so there we go. Sorry, I, I can't see from here. So yellow bulled oxpecker. So b we've seen both species, but uh, more commonly we've been seeing yellow bulled, and particularly on buffalo and zebra, we've been seeing a lot more yellow bulled oxpeckers. Now this is a small satellite herd. There's probably about 30 or 35 of them. Now in the distance, where we, in the area where we're heading towards, there's a herd of about two, 300, and I think they've just broken off and, and come down for a sort of little wallow uh, down next to the river and I think they will head back to join the big herd at, at some stage which is probably about two three kilometers from us. Now this is a different big herd from the one we saw yesterday. Uh, uh, sorry Megs you just cut out there for a second. I know Rishi was asking about the horns of the buffalo and then I got a beep. And you can see all the flies, an incredible amount of flies. And that's why the lions like to sleep in the trees around here. There we, Rishi, Rishi is commenting that the, the horns of the, the buffalo do look very different. And as I said, you will find some horns that are similar. But the East African bulls generally have this sort of very shallow, wide. Uh, and, and it's quite impressive. Uh, it, it's, it's, it's stunning to look at. And it looks like... Someone has decided that the, it's time for the herd to move on. Now, I've got a quiz for everyone. So, from these buffalo, 
I'm going to head across to a triple skirchy and I want to know if anyone knows what I'm going to look at. I'm going to look at a triple skirchy next. So if you know what a triple skirchy is, hashtag Safari Live uh, and send your answers through. I'll be very impressed if you guys can get it. Uh, so what is a triple skirchy? And we're going to, as the buffalo move around, we're just going to turn around. Oh, hang on. What's happening there? I think it's Topi chasing Topi up ahead, Zander. So it looks like there's a, a bit of showmanship or gamemanship going on between those Topi. You got them? Yeah. There you go, running off in the distance. And it's just, it, it, it's just absolutely mind-blowing the, the distances we can see here. Okay, let's head towards... Oh, before we move, I'm sorry, there's just so much to look at. Sorry, Zanda, I'm making you do, do the 360 dance today. Um, we can see the back of a, a Defasa waterbuck, and I said you can see they don't have the white ring like the, 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 the common waterbuck that we get in the Sabi Sands. They've just got a big white blotch on their bottom. So there we go, uh, the Defasa waterbuck. Now, before I get sidetracked again, let's keep moving towards the Triple Skirchi. Sorry, buffs. Hi, guys. So it looks like the herd is up and on their way to go join uh, the bigger herd, which is in the direction of the triple skirchies. But the triple skirchies are not the big herd of buffalo. Mm -hmm. ah, I wonder who knows what a triple skirchie is. Oh, they definitely look like, look at you like you owe them money. There's no other way to describe it. Especially with those big wide horns. Bye, buffs. So, off the main roads that we've been driving on, there's there's these wonderful little 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 tracks like we are now that meander, and I know. We were asked if we could go closer to the, the forest, so that's what we're doing. So, fingers crossed that we might even find a leopard on our way to triple skirchies. Because there are more than one triple skirchy. Eggsy, do you know what a triple skirchy is? Eggsy doesn't know. It's a big surprise. Doug definitely knows. He's smiling in the back there, uh, having a little giggle. So, I'll be very impressed. I don't even think Final Control know what a triple skirchy is. Now, this is going to be a good area for leopards. So as we come across to the, uh, along the Mara River, along the edge of the tree line, this is, a, this is going to be a good spot. So uh, we're, going to keep, we're going to keep checking. Um, uh, it's going to take us about, well, it depends. We can go a bit faster, about, about five minutes to get to Triple Skirchies. I just like saying that word. I think more than anything else, Triple Skirchie. Zander, sing it. Triple no, that's not singing, Zander. It's rapping. Oh, sorry. Sorry. Sorry, Zander. <laughs> okay. Okay. So while we uh, make our way, you can see how wet it gets here. So uh, you can't use this road after the rain. But we're going to bump our way along to the triple skirchy. Give you some time to think about it. Uh, while we do that, let's go see what feathered friend Byron has marching down the road.